Oort cloud, immense, roughly spherical cloud of icy small bodies that revolve around the Sun at distances typically more than 1,000 times that of the orbit of Neptune. Unlike the planets, which orbit on the same plane of the solar system, the Oort cloud is a dense smattering of material that envelopes the entire solar system. Like the Kuiper belt, the Oort cloud is a reservoir of trans-Neptunian objects, though it is over a thousand times more distant. The idea of a cloud of icy objects was first proposed in 1932 by Estonian astronomer Ernst Ick, who postulated that long-period comets originated in an orbiting cloud at the outermost edge of the solar system. In 1950, the concept was resurrected by Jane Ord, who independently hypothesized its existence to explain the behavior of long-term comets that may have originated somewhere as far as 100,000 times Earth's distance from the Sun. The inner limits of the Oort cloud begin at about 2,000 astronomical units from the Sun. The outer edge is believed to be about 10,000 to 100,000 AU from the Sun. The cloud stretches out almost a quarter of the way to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. It is spherically shaped and consists of an outer cloud and a donut-shaped inner cloud. This dark region of space is home to several trillion individual objects larger than 1 km and several billion with a diameter over 20 km. This mass of material is believed to be the leftover remnants of the early solar system. The estimated 2 trillion objects in the Oort cloud are primarily composed of ices of ammonia, methane, and water. Formed in the beginning of the solar system, the objects are pristine chunks of the cloud's early life, which means these comets provide insight into the environment in which the early Earth evolved. While gravity drew other bits of dust and ice together into larger celestial bodies, the residents of the Oort cloud experienced a different outcome. Gravity from the other planets primarily from gas giants such as Jupiter kicked them into the outer solar system, where they remain. Oort cloud is similar to the Kepler belt, both are the sites of comets, asteroids and dwarf planets. But there are few differences. This two regions vary primarily in terms of distance and location. The Kuiper belt orbits in approximately the same plane as the planets, ranging from 30 to 50 times as far from the Sun as Earth. But the Oort cloud is a shell that surrounds the entire solar system, and is a hundred times as distant. The short-period comets are thought to originate in the Kuiper belt, the long-period comets which completes its orbit around the Sun in a few thousand years are thought to originate in the Oort cloud. Comets from the Oort cloud can travel as far as three light years from the Sun. The farther they go, the weaker the Sun's gravitational hold grows. Passing stars and clouds of molecular gas can easily change the orbit of these comets, stripping them from our Sun or casting them back toward it. When the comet Hayakotake passed within 9 million miles of Earth in 1996, it was completing a journey of about 17,000 years from the distant reaches of the Oort cloud. Hale-Bopp was another long-period comet that traveled in from the Oort cloud. Visible for nearly a year and a half, it passed within 122 million miles of the Earth. Both of these Oort cloud objects had their orbits drastically changed as a result of their pass through the solar system. Halley's Comet is also believed to have originally come from the Oort cloud, although it is now a Kuiper belt object. Scientists have also identified several dwarf planets that they believe are part of this distant group. The largest is Sedna, which is thought to be three quarters the size of Pluto. Sedna is 8 billion miles away from Earth and orbits the Sun approximately every 10,500 years. Since the Oort cloud is so far away, Space probes have yet to reach the area of the Oort cloud. Voyager 1, the fastest and farthest of the interplanetary space probes currently leaving the solar system, will reach the Oort cloud in about 300 years and would take about 30,000 years to pass through it. However, around 2025, the radiosotope thermoelectric generators on Voyager 1 will no longer supply enough power to operate any of its scientific instruments preventing any further exploration by Voyager 1.